Hello, dear friends. Debacle means disaster, but with nuances. It is to say, a thing of dubious quality, outcome, organization, appearance, or other characteristics. The avalanche of news is overwhelming, and I have summarized it, it as best as I can. Opinion piece. Is the debacle starting? Crypto market crash. The economic system is failing. Gold shines and cryptos plunge. Falls of more than 30% of Wednesday. The theater was the only one that didn't collapse. Starbase sold 40 times in an hour and a half. Sometime, something very important is about to happen. Investors exit Bitcoin in favor of gold. Gold rises as cryptocurrencies fall. When Bitcoin sneezes, the market catches a cold. The crisis could be an opportunity to buy. The digital yuan is the biggest threat to the West. The fall followed China's rejection of tokens. The crypto market has lost mo almost a billion dollars. Billionaires are divesting themselves of their stocks. A message from heaven warns of a short period of extreme crisis. Let's start. The crypto market crash, momentary hiccup, or the start of a debacle. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies experienced declines of more than 30% this Wednesday. For the first time in more than three months, Bitcoin fell below $40,000, continuing a decline driven in recent days by Elon Musk's twists and news from China. The drop represented an acceleration of a downtrend in the world's number of one cryptocurrency that had begun over the past 10 days. When Bitcoin sneezes, it calls the rest of the crypto complex because the dominant digital asset has increasingly become an indicator of sentiment, not just in unconventional markets, but as a measure of risk appetite in general. Thus, the Bitcoin went on to lose about a third of its price in the last 24 hours to around 30,200 after reaching this low. The currency has railed a bit and is now selling at around $37,800. Other cryptocurrencies also suffered heavy losses. Thus, the second most capitalized digital currency, Ethereum, lost about 25% of its value and its share price is now around $2,470. On the other side, the Dogecoin, which is trading at uh, 0 0.35, fell by 25%, while some predict a total collapse, collapse of the crypto market and others make conjectures about the point where the fall will stop. Many analysts assure that the current crisis is nothing new and even qualify it as a predictable phenomenon. Some analysts predict more losses to come as Bitcoins fall below $40,000 marks the passing of a crash or barrier that could trigger further liquidations. Saxo Bank's chief investment officer, Steen Jacobsen, described the event as an extensive delivering, delivering. at the CIS this as a deeper and broader sell-off than on previous occasions. Investors may be extinct in Bitcoin in favor of gold, according to analyst at JP Morgan, whose site open access data on future contracts for that currency on the exchange. That data shows the most precipitous and sustained liquidation in Bitcoin futures since last October indicating a continued pullback by institutional investors. Losses The cryptocurrency market has lost nearly $1 billion in value 
since the April peak. Wednesday's Bitcoin plunge caused the entire cryptocurrency market to lose nearly a third of its value, which loses approaching to 1 billion since last man month's peak. The sharp drop came shortly after the People's Bank of China announced that digital token tokens cannot be used as a form of payment. The regulator said that the virtual currencies were not real, stating that they should not and cannot be used as currency in the market. It also referred to a recent rise in the price of cryptocurrency as a speculation. The cryptocurrency market had been on an uptrend since the beginning of the year, but suffered significant losses last week, which are believed to have been driven by comments made by Dutch mogul Elon Musk on social media. The entrepreneur announced that Tesla would no longer accept Bitcoin due to the impact of its mining on the environment. The third an exception. The only major cryptocurrency that didn't collapse after China's restrictions was the Theta, a stable coin whose value is pushed to that of the dollar. The Theta ranks third in that ranking, with a capitalization, capitalization of close $58.4 billion. Its value at the moment is exactly one dollar, and in the last 24 hours is only fluctuated by less of than 0.2%. Financial meltdown. Billionaires dump their stocks. As the nation's seers and billionaires begin to exit a little faster than usual at the end of a 13 year bull market, it may be time to start paying attention. Amazon's Jeff Bezos and Google co-founder Sergey Brin are just two of the well-known names that have been dumping their stocks. They are joined by names like Mark Zuckerberg and Larry Ellison. All the elements are in place for things to really heat up, according to Rabobank. As the market goes through another spasm of inflation, deflation reflected in some commodity prices falling from sky-high peaks and some rising even higher, gold rising as cryptocurrencies fall. It's time to stress that all the elements are in place for things to really heat up. Judy Shelton writes that cryptocurrency boom reflects a radical challenge to central bank policies. The impetus behind the cryptocurrency boom is being driven by populist aspirations to decentralize finance in the name of democracy in a radical challenge to central bank policies that are perceived to be favorable to big investors, big business and big government. Threat. Investor Kyle Bass claims that the digital yuan is the biggest threat the West has faced in the last 30 to 40 years. This Chinese project, project has been linked to the possibility of circumventing sanctions imposed on several countries by Washington. The advent of the digital yuan is a major threat to the West that could undermine developed economies, says Kyle Bass, chief investment officer at Hyman Capital Man Management, who described the Chinese project as a digital Trojan horse. In quote, I think China could force the adoption of its digital currency for trade and investment in the country, unless the US and the rest of the West outlaws it or generally doesn't allow it. Bass told ZNBC, the expert called the digital yuan the biggest threat the West has faced in the last 30 to 40 years for making it possible for Beijing to get its claws everywhere in the West and potentially exports its digital authoritarianism. I mean, the Wall Street Journal noted in April that the crypto yuan would represent a major blow to the US 
as it would largely eliminate its ability to impose sanctions and blue gates throughout the international banking system. Thus, the new Chinese currency would serve as a, as a platform for Iran and other blacklisted countries to trade without US consent or knowledge. The so-called digital currency electronic payment is designed to partially replace cash. It will be linked to the user's cell phone number, enabling transactions throughout an app. It will be a legal means to, of payment and will no need banks as intermediaries. As part of the tests, the authorities of the cities of Beijing and Suzhou distributed 40 million yuan, about $6.2 million, in a public lottery during the Lunar New Year celebration last February. There are also plan, plans to expand the test to other cities. Crisis equal opportunity. Cryptocurrency crisis could be an opportunity to buy cryptocurrencies collapsed Wednesday, with Bitcoin failing as much as 30% in a single session amid regulatory pressures overseas and negative headlines on the domestic front. In an interview with CNBC's Trading Nation, New Street Advisor Group's group founder and CEO Delano Saporu said that for long-term th thinking investors, this is actually a great opportunity to buy at prices you may not see for a while. Dave Potnoy says he's still involved in cryptocurrencies despite massive drop. Barstool Sports founder Dave Potnoy said Wednesday that any true believer in cryptocurrencies should love today's crash because they could get more coins at a discount. In quotes, I am still involved in cryptocurrencies, Portnoy said in a video posted on Twitter. If you love, in quotes again, if you love cryptocurrencies, if you believe in them, you should never be happier than you are today because you got to get them at a discount. Former Amazon CEO says his company would go bankrupt. Jeff Bezos simply shocked Amazon investors with this bold prediction. In quotes, I predict that someday Amazon will fail. In a recent inter interview, Bethos explained that he believes Amazon will someday get hit and eventually go bankrupt. What might be even more alarming is that Bethos has been dumping approximately $1 billion worth of Amazon stock each year. But Bethos is not only cashing out, he is reinvesting his money in a fast emerging technology that he believes will improve all businesses. Reset News The World Economic Forum cancelled its annual meeting. After initially rescheduling the forum from May to the late summer months, the World Economic Forum decided to cancel its annual gathering of powerhouses in the world of markets, business and politics, which is usually held in Davos, Switzerland, but had been moved to Singapore. The Great Davos Reset is failing and the people are regaining control. The central bank is pushing the Great Reset as hard as possible, but it is falling, failing, as it was completely counted and now they will try again but once people are awake, this would be very difficult. The central bank pushes their plan to drive people away from the new alternative currency. Charlie Ward reveals that something big is about to happen. Gold shines up as cryptocurrencies collapse. The dollar bonds and stocks plunge. The QFS quantum financial system has integrated with banks and financial institutions globally. Stock and commodity exchanges has just under 4 million companies that use credit card point of scale transactions have linked globally with the QFS. It is ready to be implemented. The dark side of the force has triggered the Israeli Gaza conflict of the last 10 days 
although it was badly beaten and failed to set off a world war in Ukraine or Taiwan. Atlantis report the major supply side impact of the global recession. The world is now facing the most severe economic and social recession, recession in modern times. We are now entering a period of global crisis that will change the world for a long time to come. China has become a major player in the global supply chain, and production and demand problems in China are spreading around the world throughout direct and indirect channels. The supply chain impact would be felt around the world. The European Union, US, Japan, Canada, and all major Asian countries would feel an immediate impact on China's supply chain. Supply chain disruptions would become more frequent in the coming weeks as warehouses are drying up. Many companies and industry sectors would lose productivity and such could become inoperable. This would be a type 1 in a billion scenario restart. Basically a perfect storm. What people don't understand about this is that all supply chains could fail. The system is failing. The old fiat system is rearing its ugly head. People are feeling the crisis and it's getting worse as time goes on according to the X22 report. The central bank is not improving the economy. They want it destroyed to move us to the big reset that has already failed. The gold standard will destroy the old system. Audits now pose a problem for the dark side. They are concerned that one of the truth, the truth comes out, it will expose the crime, and it will. They want it stopped at all costs, but every time they reject it makes their case weaker and weaker. People must see the truth, because it had to be that way. Message from Heaven Message post posted on the Abundant Hope website on June 15th after many months of silence. In quotes, To all who read this, I am Mojoronson, the Abonal Magisterial son, son. I advise all who follow Abundant Hope to prepare for a brief period of probable extreme discomfort. discomfort. It is urgent. It includes not only food and water, but perhaps a short period without electricity in some places a lack of public communications. This is not the internet blackout that has been suggested and will be much shorter but intense. What is an Avonal Magisterial son, son? Whenever an original and absolute concept of being formulated by the Eternal Son is united with the new and divine ideal of love and service conceived by the Infinite Spirit, a new and original Son of God, a magisterial Son of Paradise, is produced. These sons constitute the order of Abonal as opposed to the order of Michael, of Michael, the Creator's sons. Although not creators, is in the personal sense. They are closely associated with the Michaelis in all their work. The Abonels are planetary ministers and judges, the magistrates of the time space realms, of all races, of all worlds, of all universes. The total number of magisterial sons in the grand universe is approximately one billion. They are an autonomous order, directed by the Supreme Council on Paradise, which is composed of experienced abonals drawn for the services of all the universes. But when assigned and commissioned in a local universe, they serve under the direction of the Creator Son of that domain. Abonals are the paradise sons of service and bestowal to the individual planets of the local universes, and see, since each Abonal Sang has a unique personality, since no two are alike, their work is individually unique in the realms of their sojourn, where they often incarnate 
in the likeness of more of flesh, and are sometimes both born of earth mothers on the evolutionary worlds. Spain. Morocco closes its border with Ceuta, and Spain retains hot more than half of the 8,000 migrants. This Wednesday, Morocco has again closed the accesses to the autonomous city of Ceuta after the massive entry of migrants to this Spanish enclave located in North Africa. More than 8,000 people, mostly Moroccan citizens, crossed between Monday and Tuesday to Spanish soil, swimming or in small boats due to the lack of surveillance on the Moroccan side of defense separating the two countries. Already 5,600 migrants have been returned or have returned voluntarily, although the situation of foreign minors who have arrived without the guardianship of any adult is now of particular concern. Feuda is not for sale, in quotes. They received Pedro Sánchez with shouts, blows and requests for resignation. The president of the government has received, was received in Ceuta with boss and kicks. The residents of the city asked for his resignation after the arrival of 8,000 migrants swimming. They also demanded the dismissal of the delegate of the government in the North African Square, Salvador Amateos. Spain serves Morocco, the Sahrawi leader, with a summons for war crimes. The Spanish Supreme Court has served war crime summons of Brahim Ghali, the leader of the Western Sahara independence movement. It comes just days after 8,000 African migrants crossed the Moroccan border into the Spanish territory of Ceuta, putting intense pressure on the small enclave's infrastructure. Morocco was furious when Gali arrived in Spain for treatment last month. Spanish politician banned from Twitter for hate speech after saying a man can't get pregnant. Francisco José Contreras was banned from his account for 12 hours, according to Fox News, for saying men don't have an uterus or eggs. M migrants keep coming from Libya to Italy. Over the past week, mostly in the span of a single day, 2,000 new migrants of, to Europe have crowded into Italy's first point of entry on the tiny island of Lampedusa around a reception center that can hold only 200 people. Shot news. Police brace for another violent summer. To that end, the Wall Street Journal reports that police departments across the country are stepping up patrols and implementing new tactics to prepare for what they say could be a violent summer, as the states re remove restrictions. It also cites an increase in grand purchases during the crisis as crime spirals out of control in major cities. Palm Beach prepare for possible Trump arrest. Law enforcement officials in Palm Beach County, Florida, have been actively preparing for the possibility that the Manhattan District Attorney could indict the former president while he is at Mar-a-Lago, according, according to two high-ranking county officials involved in planning sessions. Fox News asked to dismiss Dominion Board insisting lawsuit. Fox News on Tuesday asked, asked a Delaware court to dismiss a lawsuit by Dominion Board Systems with alleged defamation and demands $1.6 billion in damages following stories published in the wake of the 2020 election. Fox said the lawsuit would affect the media's right to free, to free a speech which allows the public to be informed about allegations of overriding public interest. Judge bars Biden administration for doling out grants based on race sex. 
A federal judge this week blocked the administration for awarding grants in a program aimed at prioritizing, prioritizing applicants based on their race or sex. Netanyahu says Gaza operation continues, rejects Biden request. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Wednesday that he is determined to continue the military operation in Gaza shortly after speaking with President Biden, who asked him to carry out a meaningful de-escalation right now. Yorkshire Church to reply centuries-old sculptures with feminist icons. A historic church in East Yorkshire is to receive a facelift replacing sculptures dating back hundreds of years with feminist icons or icons. The vicar, the vicar of the church, the Rev. Re Rebecca Lumley, received approval of the unorthodox reforms from an ecclesiastical court, which called the changes a way of celebrating the achievements of women. North Korea bans skinny jeans and mallets. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has banned skinny jeans and mallet, mallet style hairstyles in his country, guided by fears that foreign fashion influences or local jobs could lead to North Korea's collapse. Persons dyed hair and t-shirts with slogan have also been banned. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.